G'day, my name's Nurt, and today we're looking at magic. Zip zap zoop. I hope I found good effects for that. So what is magic and is it real? These questions have been asked for about as long as the word magic has existed. It's thought to have originated from the Persian word magu, which effectively means any kind of effect that's mostly regarded a mystery. It was later adopted by the Greek language and then Latin, getting pushed further and further towards any practice that either I don't understand or doesn't align with my beliefs. This was useful for religions because you could dismiss any other belief system as just magic and that aligns you with demons. And you don't want that now, do you? Now this is a fairly western interpretation of magic, with each culture having their own words and interpretations for these practices. But in English, albeit ambiguous, the word magic is used as a kind of blanket term. So, can we study it? Is it possible to understand a practice that is almost defined by its inability to be understood? Of course we can! Kind of. I'm gonna go with probably. It's an obscure concept, so I'll explain some of the fundamental ideas behind the different schools of thought. What magic truly is, to its core, is knowledge and understanding. Knowledge. I apologise if that wasn't the dramatic answer you are hoping for, but what were you basing your assumptions on? Fiction? Because if you look at some of the great literary witches and wizards of our time, there's a reoccurring motif. Knowledge, books, scrolls, and an analytical mind to understand them, but more about magic and fiction another time. That's what magic honestly is, an understanding of the natural world. When you think of magic, maybe you think of somebody creating a fireball. Typically, they're not surprised by this, because not only do they understand it, but they put in place the steps required to create it. This may seem like a fanciful example, but in the Middle Ages, magnets were considered tools of the occult. So what's the difference here between the spectator and the magician? It's simply the understanding of the capabilities of the natural world. When people hear the word magic, they may think of witches or wizards, or this guy or that guy, stage magic or performance magic. Some people like to keep the two separate. You may notice the letter K being used to distinguish the two, but it's kind of magic all the same. Here, I have a coin. Then, through sleight of hand, or drawing of attention, they've disappeared. To the captivated audience, the coin has disappeared, but the magician knows it's just up his sleeve. The only difference between the two is that the magician understands or knows what has happened, while the audience is left in the dark. To the skeptics watching, that's right, I see you, you may not consider that magic. It's the trick, the audience could figure it out, or maybe the magician explains the trick at the end of the show. Haha, <laughs> proof that your logic falls short. But it's still kind of magic, just now the audience knows. I'll use fireballs again, because it's a good metric. If another wizard understands how it's made, does that stop it from being magic? And that's what wizards do, they explain the trick. That's why they always have apprentices. This is whack. Magic is understanding the world around you, especially when that knowledge or those practices are outside of standard convention. But just knowing more doesn't make you a wizard. It's also how you use it. Willpower. Willpower is a large part of most interpretations of magic. You have your knowledge and this is how you use it. If you're about to fight somebody and a hammer falls from the sky and knocks them unconscious, that's not magic, that's just really odd. But if you're about to fight somebody, and maybe you lure them beneath a construction site and spook some pigeons, or go full Looney Tunes and turn on a giant magnet, then as far as the spectator is concerned, especially the person you're fighting, what you just did was a pure act of magic, or an act of chance that you seemed to have anticipated. But willpower doesn't always slot into the perception of magic that simply. For example, how can an object be magical? One theory is that any object can be imbued with intent, I will for this blade to strike true in battle. Magic weapon. I beseech this coffee to taste delicious. Ah, it's beer. 
What a ruse! Magic. And then, of course, there's more abstract interpretations, where just a moment can be magic. Like a sunset or a chance meeting, but that has nothing to do with willpower. Instead, it's about energy. As Nikola Tesla once said, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Now, I don't think he was talking about magic, but you can interpret magic the same way. Every action and every object has or can produce some kind of energy. That's fairly conventional thinking. But to push it further, every thought, intent, time, encounter, missed opportunity, these things also carry some kind of energy. We actually have metrics for measuring some of these things, but it's the idea of combining all of them and understanding how to affect this energy. That's a way of interpreting magic. These are just some perspectives of magic. Yes, some things that are considered magic are pure pseudoscience, but some of it actually works. A lot of modern science, psychology, and medicine was once considered arcane before it became better understood. Does explaining the science kill the magic? Maybe. And there's only one way to find out. I'm going to be exploring the world of the arcane. I'm talking alchemy, witchcraft, druids, divination. But don't worry, I've still got cryptozoology and mythology on the way. And if that sounds like the kind of stuff you want to see, be sure to smash that subscribe. And if you don't, I'm going to learn how to teleport into your house. Replace all your Xbox games with... Kazam on VHS.